Welcome to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls. Um, I'm Alex. And I'm Sarah. And this is a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast where we are obsessed with her books and can't stop thinking about it or talking about it. So we figured, why not record us thinking and talking about it? So we're going to break down chapters, go through each book separately, go into character analysis and any thoughts or kind of theories that we have about books, characters, plots, etc. And maybe play some fun games along the way. Exactly. So welcome and enjoy. And this is full of spoilers about the spoilers that the cereal spoiled <laughs> of Hera. And uh, so, spoiler of spoilers of the cereal. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Yes. Uh, okay, so the cereal appears three times, mm-hmm. once in each book of the series. Um, I guess the first part of the series, because it didn't come up in Silver Flames I don't at think all. So. Um, so the story appears once each time. I'm going to highlight a few like key things that he says, um, in each of the books. And we'll start with the first book, Court of Thorns and Roses. So we've kind of briefly touched on these already in our last main episode, but we'll see how much more we have to add to it. Yeah. Um, but the first thing that the serial spoils is that Tamlin is High Lord of the Supreme Court. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. Yeah. Um, so my brain is like, well, for her, obviously this is like huge news. Right. Um, and so, like I said, we've talked about this, but I just, I think it's funny to think about how long it would have taken her to figure that one out by herself because the cereal seems like surprised she didn't figure that out already. Right. Well, because this next question was like, did you know you were even in the spring court? And it's like, (laughs) duh, kind of thing. But I mean, honestly, There's no, we have no idea, like, she could have gone years and years and years without ever knowing that he was the High Lord, because she has nothing to to compare to, Mm -hmm. because he can require everyone in his court to keep silent, so they would never say anything, none of the servants in the house, Um, which she, like, you know, she winds up seeing them after they come back from the glen, he, like, removes the, the glamour, so she's able to, like, see and interact with these fairies, but they would never say anything to her that their master basically wouldn't allow and then she has Lucian, who she knows is also high fae, but she knows, like, Tamlin's a little more powerful than him. But when you have nothing really above that, if she's never interacting with any other high fae or anyone that is a high lord besides, like, the supposed spring court high lord, she, why would she ever know that right. he was high lord? Or, like, how would she ever find out? Like, honestly, only Lucian would probably be the one... That would like spoil it yeah. for her because he, I feel like he tells all the secrets about lying and yeah. about like iron and all that stuff. But again, like if he works or if he's part of Tamlin's court, like Tamlin could technically order him to be silent, just like the whole yeah. Aramantha thing. Like they don't, nobody else is allowed to say anything, so she might never know, right. which would be you know interesting. What you said, though, did just remind me though, everything we've like learned is from Lucian. Like we learned <laughs> Tamlin's name. We yep. learned about the line and the iron. I'm just... Lucian has loose lips, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the second thing the cereal spoiled, mm-hmm. but it was a much later spoiler in this first book, is him saying, stay with the High Lord human. Yes. Because right now, we all assume that that's Tamlin. Right. But it's not Tamlin. I mean, I think it's both. I think... Fair enough. I think the cereal knew... What she was destined for. And I think she knew that, you know, in the beginning, like, by staying with Tamlin, I think she was able to write everything. Mm -hmm. Like, get rid of the blight and all those things. And so by staying with him, she was able to do that. And then... But by staying with Reese, she was able to get through that. You know what I mean? True. True. But if she hadn't, like, stayed... If she wasn't in love with Tamlin... When she was, she would have never have come back and gone mm-hmm. up to the mountain. So I feel like she had to stay with Tamlin first to get okay. to the mountain. But he's he, so the serial says, and like, and and all will be righted. Right. When we think so, like in the book, we don't really know what that like everything changed is. Right. But later on, we learn all about Highburn mm-hmm. and the cauldron right. and all of that stuff. So it's like. When it says all will be righted, I don't think it's like just Amarantha. No. I think it's also the whole situation with Highburn and the manipulation of the cult. Like, yeah. that's what I picture when 
the serial says right now, all will be right in. Right. Yeah, so in that case, it's definitely Reese. Well, but I think I think you also have that good point of, like, she needed to stick with Tamlin in yeah. these early phases to get to that next point. Right. Where she then needed to stick with Reese. Yeah, I think she just needs to be with a high lord <laughs> to get to where things need to be. So it's, like, Tamlin and then Reese. And right. it's also, like, she goes back to Tamlin, too, when... That's true. You know, she becomes high lady and, like, marries Reese. She goes back... And she lives with Tamlin for a while, and it's like that sets things in motion for Hybern. So it's like I think she has to be with like a high lord to like make all this plan happen. Right. Whatever like fate has in store yeah. requires her to be with a high lord. The surreal is just like so dang clever. I know. He's probably just going home and like giggling about it. He's like, haha. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> as much as a creepy creature giggles. can and giggles. But yeah. I just, I still have that, like, TikTok image of the surreal, like, sipping tea in my brain. <laughs> and he's just, it's an attitude I love. Um, speaking of which, though, I just, these next, so that's all that's in A Court of Thorns and Roses. Yeah. We're going to dive into the next two books. I feel like every time I visit, like, the surreal comes into play a little bit mm-hmm. and we get to visit with him, um, I like him more and more. Oh, I really like him. Yeah. The more we see the surreal, <laughs> I'm like, this guy knows what's up. But it's like how we've only interacted with him three times yeah. in this entire series. And I'm like, oh, no, I like the serial. He's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, okay. So Court of Mist and Fury. Yes. Let me find the right. Okay. So, in Court of Mist and Fury, Feyre captures the Surreal because Reese was injured. Right. And so, she's trying to save him. He was shot with arrows, and he's clearly been poisoned, and she doesn't know how to save him. So, right. that's why she seeks out the Surreal. Which is just amazing that he just so happens to be within range of where she is. I you know. know but I'll let that, I'll let that lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the other thing I thought was interesting was how the Surreal changes his greeting to Feyre in the second book mm-hmm. so he calls her human in the mm-hmm. first book and this one he in he um speaks to her and says Feyre curse breaker which is just like Ooh. it's interesting he like they there's been no interaction between yeah. these points and he knows mm-hmm. she is the curse breaker that is cool actually yeah uh so she has two questions one is what poison was used on the arrows and where does she find a cure right and so he gives her those answers um which is helpful Mm -hmm. but the thing he spoils is he says if you wish to speed your mate's healing in addition to your blood of pink flowered weed sprouts by the river make him chew it and she's like what what did you just say you just say mate mate what what it's crazy and it's funny because again the surreal it says he pauses and grins and it says you did not know that and so it's a similar <laughs> moment to like him revealing tamlin as high lord of just like oh i thought you would have known this by now yeah and it's funny because i never picked up on like that he said that to like both times that he's like approached her it's only like when you're comparing them you're like dang this girl is dumb i know well or it's like if you know everything i'm sure you think everything is obvious right true <laughs> But um, it's I just think that's so funny, and she's like, say it. And he goes, the High Lord of the Night Court is your mate. And I'm like, I feel like this is the first time the surreal, like, clearly spelled out. Like, it is exactly this for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, Because he's always a little, little vague yeah. sometimes. So that's a spoiler if there was. Oh, my gosh. But that was the best. Because it's like, you can just see her, like, simmering. And it's like, how did he not tell me, like... Yeah. Well, that was the second know? thing that the surreal spoiled. Because okay. she was like, does he know? Yeah. And he basically was like, yes. And she's like, for a long while. And she and he answers, yes. So that obviously spirals into her frustrations... Oh, yes. ...with Reese once he's healed. Yeah. Because uh, he knew from when she became uh, a fae. Like, when she became high fae, like, right afterwards. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so I read, like, like I said, I reread this whole book because I know we were only doing chapters at a time, but I was just, I needed to read it. Yeah. And at the very end of the book, it's like Reese, when she comes out onto the top of the mountain, like, right before he leaves and everything, they're talking, and it's like she turns around or something, and he just, like, he's, like, in awe. Like, it's it's like I can, I could literally see it when I was reading it, and I was like, Stop! oh, my gosh, like, he's discovered that she's his mate. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Like, when you read it, you're going to be so freaking excited. You're going to be like, I love this so much. It's amazing, because it's like, 
I never, even like this, I've read this book four times now. <laughs> the first three times, I never like, Stop. it never like clicked or did anything. Let me see if I can pull it up. No. Like, hang on. Hang on. Oh my God. Okay, this is going to be pause. I mean, they can listen to me cry if they want. They can. No, this, like, I need to find this. I was reading it and I was like, shut the front door. How did I not read this before? <laughs> Okay, so he said, well, goodbye for now, he said, rolling his neck as if we hadn't been talking about anything important at all. He bowed at the waist, those wings vanishing entirely, and had begun to fade into the nearest shadow when he went rigid. His eyes locked on mine, wide and wild, and his nostrils flared. Shock, pure shock, flashed across his features at whatever he saw on my face, and he stumbled back a step, back a step, actually stumbled. What is, I began, he disappeared, simply disappeared, not a shadow in sight, into the crisp air. Oh my God. I was like, how have I never noticed this before? I was like, he literally saw her. I am writhing on Sarah's couch. Saw her. Oh my God. Is that not the best? Like, I was like, how did I never see this before? That's like the best part of the whole book. The whole first book, that is the part. I was like, this is amazing. How did I not notice this? I'm so emotional right now. I know. I know. Oh, my God. It only took me four times to understand <laughs> Sarah J. Moss's amazingness. You're welcome, reader. You're welcome, readers. I am officially giving you the best part of the first book. Wow. Right? Isn't that amazing? I just. Because they always, they always talk about, like, when, they, when you see your mate, it, like, locks in. And I'm like, I see that. Like, I can literally right. picture this happening. Yeah, like it's he's, not necessarily the first time you see them, but there's, like, a moment where yes. it puts into place. And he, like, wide eyes and, like, takes a step back, like, in shock. I was like, oh, my God, that was it. That was the moment. I love this book series so, so I know. much. I know. I, it's like I never thought I would find, like, new things about it, but I just found that this time I read it, and I was like, this was the best thing ever. I love it so much. Wow. wow. Okay. Spoiler, spoiler. I'll also drop that when we talk about those chapters. Actually, no, I can't because they don't know about Reese they yet. They don't know so about stupid. it. Okay, I won't drop it then. But that's why you're listening to a spoiler. <laughs> spoiler mini so That's why when we first started making this podcast, I was like, we have to have one where we can talk. Yes. Uh, like some part, some episode thing so we where we talk. can just talk. Yes. Hence the minis, which are we're doing a really bad job historically of making the minis, but we'll see how this keeps going. <laughs> But wow, that made my night. I know, right? I thought it was the best. I was so excited when I read that. I love that so much. Okay, um, okay one last thing yes. in the serial in the Court of Mist and Furies, or in, in a Court of Mist and Fury, is at one point she's questioning that she's his mate. Mm-hmm. She's like, how can I possibly his, be his mate? Mates were equals, matched, at least in some ways. Yeah. And the serial goes, he's the most powerful high lord to ever walk this earth. Which, pause. Okay. I know, you're like, wait, what? Like, ever? Ever? Ever. Ever. Yep. And you're like, woo! And then he continues and he says, you are new. You are made of all seven high lords, unlike anything. Are you two not similar in that? Are you not matched? And I don't know if that's like a full that's not like a spoiler but I'm just like I love that description of it yeah. and that understanding of like because I think again we've talked about how like self-conscious Feyre is right. and it's like no you are at his level right and it's so cool to see how maybe this statement mm-hmm. helps embolden her in the future like yeah. when she is in the war with Highburn and all those things, it helps her, you know, to feel more powerful. Like, I can be at this level. Yeah. Like, and I can be brave and I can do these things because I am his mate, his match, yeah. his equal, and he's the most powerful High Lord to ever walk the earth. Well, I wonder also, like, in that statement, if it goes into the fact that, you know, all seven High Lords gave her their power. Yeah. And then when she saves Reese, all of them mm. like give him their power so That's it's like true. they're truly equal in that sense that they all they have all of their power Interesting. like each of them like well i don't know if reese took the powers in the same way she if, did i don't know i don't know if he did but but, like, but there was a similar experience of yeah. like the seven high lords coming together and giving them life yeah. essentially mm. that's so interesting yeah <laughs> all right and then the serial piece out on that one okay. so we're done with a court of mist and fury okay so now mm-hmm. we are in a court of wings and Roman. Okay. 
And so in the thick of war, mm-hmm. Feyre seeks out the Suriel because she wants to, like, ask about the bone carver. Yes. And I can't remember its name, but the creature that, the like, weaver. lives in the... Or, yeah, the weaver. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, so she, she seeks him out to ask about that and, like, the war, essentially. Yeah. So she um, seeks him out, and then... So when the... When the Suriel finds her, he asks her, Have you come to kill me or to beg for my help once again, Feyre Archeron? I just like how he introduces himself to her. I find that funny. Um, so she talks with him, um, and he says, You wish to know where Highburn is hiding his, its army? And she goes, Yes, and other things, but let's start with that. And he reveals, Even I cannot see that. So it's like, for once, yeah. the Suriel's having a hard time answering some of these questions because of the cauldron mm-hmm. and that the King of Highburn is controlling. Um, but that doesn't stop the Suriel from trying to help her, right. even still. So he reveals that like calls to like mm-hmm. and to leverage Elaine or Nesta yep. to look for the cauldron. So that is a huge help. Yeah. To them finding the cauldron and finding the king of Highburn, which is really cool. Um, she also asked, because she went through this thing where she tried to essentially get rid of the cauldron, yeah. right? Um, she says, why did the cauldron not react when I joined the book and spoke the spell to nullify its power? And he goes, because you did not hold on for long enough. And she goes, it was killing me. And he says, did you think you could leash its power without a cost? Mm-hmm. And that feels like major foreshadowing yes we're for the end of the this cost. book exactly because i think they convinced themselves like oh the two of us together can do it yeah and it's like well what? i think reese convinces her right that the two of them could do it but he knew he was gonna give everything and he's the most like oh, we just most- learned he's the most powerful high lord to ever exist I know. he's the most selfless high lord to ever exist <laughs> i love him so much he's truly the best um, but so, unbeknownst to Favor, I feel like the serial is kind of spoiling. Yes, for sure. That ending a little bit, also. So she asks him, like, would the bone carver make a difference? The serial answers her, and she's the serial says, "I cannot see, not him. He is not born of this earth. His thread has not been woven in." And I just think that's very interesting. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean he's not born of this earth? Right. It's like, where else is he from? Right. And so this is a spoiler that I don't think we know yet. No. But I'm convinced, not to go too far into it, yeah. but this connected thread theory between all the Sarah J. Mass universes yeah. is where this it will eventually come in. Could definitely, potentially. I mean, because just think about, um, oh, what's her face? Um his second in command. Amran. Amran. Thank Same you. Same thing. Yeah, it's like she was not of this earth and like at the end like she, you know, goes through all that craziness and like whatnot and then comes back like reborn mm-hmm. like of this earth so it's like is like is somebody else going to be reborn? Like I just think about like I don't know, like all that inter like other universe type stuff like right. it's definitely I'm sure it's definitely all connected. Right. And then not to pull from, like, a different Sarah J. Mass series, but, like, we know from Throne of Glass yeah. that there are connecting points. Yes. Because it connects back to this book. Right. And the way that Crescent City is set up mm-hmm. feels like this weird mix where it's like, are they, is this just, like, a landing place where, like, creatures and people from all these different groups have kind of, like, ended up together? Yeah. And so, I don't know, I think there's something to come. Yeah, I definitely think it's possible that all of them will connect. Exactly, and I think that's, I think the surreal is alluding to that a little yeah. bit here when he talks about these other creatures. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, and then, so, then she's also talking about the Bone Carver, mm-hmm. and how the Bone Carver wanted the Aurora Boris, the, that mirror of yep. beginnings and endings, um, and she says, I cannot retrieve it. And he says, you're afraid to look to see what's within. She says, will it drive me mad? Break me. And this is what I love. Mm-hmm. The surreal says, it says, it was an effort not to flinch at that monstrous face, at that milky eyes and lipless mouth. Same description. That's so creepy. Yep. It says, all focused upon me. Only you can decide what breaks you, curse breaker. Only you. Mm. And I love it. Yes. 
I feel like it is, like, it's both looking back retrospectively. Yes. Like, that's, like, Farah, this is how it's always been. Yeah, you're the one that decides everything. Like, you are allowing things to break you, or you're choosing to not let them break you. Because, like, if you think all the way back to, like, her mother dying, her yes. family being impoverished, her being taken from her family and losing, like, every, from the very beginning all the way, Tamlin locking her up, yeah. all of those things. None of those truly broke her, and that was of her own power. Yeah. And so it's like, we see this, that this was true, Mm -hmm. but also, I'm so excited to see how it, like, continues to be true. Yes. Because we have more books coming, and so I'm just, I'm interested to see, like, I just, what what else? What else is there? And I just love that quote so much. I see people get that tattoo all the time. Oh, really? You get to decide what breaks you or something along those lines, and I just love it. I do love that. Only you can decide what breaks you. Mm. So, then he gives her a few more tips um, on how to stop Hyburn, right? He he starts talking about that the the books hold the key and basically to, like, work with Amran. Yeah. But then, in the middle of him explaining that to her, he is shot yep. with an arrow by freaking Iantha. Yep. I hate her. That bee. And the surreal dies. Yep. And I... Was so heartbroken. I know. It was so, so sad. It's like this creature that you've met three times over a series of three books. It's so sad that he's killed. Right. Like, I felt so sad. And I shouldn't feel that connected to a character that really has done nothing in the book. You know well, what I mean? he's done nothing, but he's done so much. Yes. He's he given keeps... her all of the important information that, she's, mm-hmm. that she needs for everything. Yep. And, like, Iantha even says, like, why does it talk to you, Farah, when it would not even deign to speak with me? So it's like... He did not have to be doing this. Yeah. Like, she's not, like, yes, she caught him. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, she's lured him every time. She's not some badass monster that's forcing him to speak. Yeah. He willingly did this. Like, there's a connection on his side, too. It just, like, it honestly, like, reminds, it just, it weirdly reminds me of, like, a father figure. I don't know if that makes any sense. But just that idea of, like, like a child, like, asking these questions and like being kind of like silly and you're just like oh kid. I feel like it's almost like this like I don't want to say like god vibe but it's like almost like a god vibe where it's like all these different like he's not of this world so it's like this other like it's like universe and fate and like he has all this like all knowing knowledge that's like not on this earth and it's like he's there to give guidance but it's not generally super clear and it's like he chose this woman who like her fate is like to help and like reset everything and like yeah. bring about peace and like do all these great things. So it's like he chose her because yeah. she had so much potential. So I don't know. I just get like that that vibe from I, it. I completely agree. I think that was what I was attempting to articulate too. Is yeah. it's like that just like very like intentional choosing mm-hmm. and just I don't know. I just you can tell in a weird way that he cares about her and like wants her to succeed Mm -hmm. but like doesn't want to make it too easy for her because it's the journey and like I don't know I just (sighs) he's a great character he is he brings a new dynamic to it yeah so So, that was spoilers from the serial (laughs) yes spoilers of the serial spoilers yes yeah um we love him do you love him let us know. Let us know. Do you want to look up images of him sipping tea on TikTok? It's a win. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for listening to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls, a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And let us know what you think. Jump in on the conversation. We look forward to chatting with you more next week. Bye-bye.